everyone. Uh, my name is Laurent. Uh, it's really great to see you all, all here. Uh, we're going to talk about machine learning. Yeah, everything is fine on the, on the display. Uh, so let's uh, have some introduction first. So I'm Laurent, I'm French. My last name is Picard. Um, I work for Google uh, in the Paris office and uh, I'm a software engineer. And um, before joining Google, so that was less uh, than one year ago, um, I, wo uh, I, I worked in the ebook industry. I was uh, an ebook pioneer, so that was a long time ago. Uh, I co-founded uh, Booking, which is a startup uh, in the which was a startup uh, in the ebook business, so it's still running. Um, and before that, I co-created the first ebook device, ebook reader in Europe. So it was called the Cybook. It was the same size uh, as an iPad, but it was in 1999. Uh, the weight was one kilogram. So I've been working a lot in embedded development, uh, uh, so software, uh, also apps, uh, and the cloud too, because uh, eventually the ebook devices got connected uh, with Wi-Fi and to the web, and then we created a full ecosystem. But I'd like to know uh, more about you also. Uh, so in the audience, who is a developer? Okay, with learning how to develop. I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm 45, still learning. Okay, uh, who is in high school, maybe? Not me. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, is there anyone already using machine learning somehow? Okay, okay. Uh, is there any data scientist in the audience? No. And uh, last question. Um, no, not the last. Um, are you using cloud services? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, that's majority. And uh, last question. Uh, so I guess you all talk Polish uh, and English. Uh, is there anyone talking another language besides Polish? Okay, so that might be useful uh, when we will be at the demo stage, okay? So the agenda is pretty simple. We will have an overview about uh, machine learning APIs. Uh, and then we will have some action because that's what I prefer. Okay, so first of all, so I work for Google, so, uh, so I'm going to talk mainly about Google uh, API. But uh, what we're going to see is pretty general. So you will find that elsewhere, uh, not always in the same form, um, some, sometimes very different. But if you retain the principles, then you will be comfortable everywhere. So first of all, um, the Google Machine Learning APIs are part of the Google Cloud platform. Uh, Google Cloud is huge. Uh, maybe you've not heard about it, but it's over, s it's roughly 70 different products. And as you can tell, we do love blue hexagons, right? Um, there are different families, so the co computing part, you want computers in the cloud. Uh, the big data part, you want to analyze the data. Uh, security, uh, storage, and databases, so I guess you know. Machine learning, we're going to have a, a look about it today. Uh, Internet of Things is something uh, that is beginning, but there's also everything related to development, managing your solutions, and also everything related to networking, okay? But let's uh, get into the details of machine learning. There are, as of today, there are three ways you can all of you benefit from machine learning as a developer or as a student uh, if you want to build something. Um, it started with data scientists, so doing hardcore machine learning. Uh, you have to study, do neural networks, maybe statistics too. You have to understand uh, deeply uh, how to deal with uh, big amounts of data and also some mathematics behind uh, because you are handling matrices somewhere. Um, the second way, um, and it's possible for since a few years, is for app developers to use machine learning APIs. And there's a new way as of today, it's AutoML. So I, I'm going to explain a little bit. So machine learning APIs is what we're going to, to have a look at today, is for all of us. Anyone can, can use machine learning APIs as long as you have some development knowledge. Uh, an API is, a, is an application programming interface. So it's an interface. So it's just like a browser. You do a request on, on the web, you get a response, and you can use this response. The difference is that it's not an HTML page, it's data, actual data that you get, okay? So this is the most, the easiest way uh, to, to do um, 
using an API, you do a request, you get a response. You cannot do anything easier than that. The second way is AutoML. So this time, you can use your own data to customize an existing um, um, neural network that has been trained already. Uh, I won't talk about it because that today this is a subject by, by itself. But you have to know that it's pretty recent. It started in January. So there's a whole family that is going to be available. And uh, the interest in that is that you can use your own data and you can train an existing model to rec recognize what you want. If you, you, you have features as of today, you can put a few pictures, a uh, few dozens, and then you will get the results that you expect. A data scientist to do that would need thousands of uh, features, for instance. And the, the, the real machine learning for uh, less people um, is for data scientists uh, mo mo most of the time, um, is where you build your own neural networks, your own models, and we have developed and provided for free um, a public library called TensorFlow. So that's a library that you can use in Python, um, which will handle for you all the matrices behind you. So you will be able to work with primitives um, pretty easily and build uh, neural networks uh, quite easily. So that's a bit harder. It will take, it, it takes at least a few hours, a couple of hours to do uh, the first sample. But with time, you can become an actual data scientist if you, if you, uh, if you want to. And um, most of the time, you are going to deal with actual data from the real life. And uh, real life is big. So you will have big amounts of data in this case. And, and then your computer, yeah, uh, what I didn't say is that TensorFlow, uh, you can download it, install it on your computer, any laptop, it will work. So that's pretty uh, convenient. Um, but with real life, real life data, uh, it might take days uh, and sometimes weeks to uh, train a model. So in this case, uh, we provide a cloud machine learning engine and you can deploy your um, model in the cloud. And in this case, it can take only a few hours instead of days. Okay, you get it? So let's get into the APIs. We will, we will focus about that. The first uh, API um, I, I would like to talk about is the network language API. So it's a back language. The input that you provide is text, okay? And from this text, you can get pretty useful insights. You can get the syntax, you can get the entities, and you can recognize the sentiments. So let's give a few examples. So I like Tolkien, maybe some of you do too. Uh, so I took an example, uh, this uh, English sentence, Tolkien was a British writer and so on. If I give this sentence to the language API, natural language API, um, it will give me this. First of all, it recognizes that it's English, okay. Then it will give me the types of the different words and the relationship between them. So uh, I know the verbs, the nouns, the adjectives and so on. Um, so with that, you can analyze big um, corpuses of text. And one feature that might um, be unnoticed, but that I like very much, is the lemmas. So the lemmas, for instance, here, was, is the past tense of to be. Every, everyone knows that. But with lemmas, it means that you can get the canonical form of any word. You can get rid of plurals, of genders, of tenses, and with that, you can index text and focus only on your lemmas. And, and so you, you, could, you could do analytics on text with just the words that you need. Next, you can recognize the entities. So if I use the same sentence um, and I query the entities, I'm going to get uh, three different words. So the red one, first, Tolkien is recognized as a person. What I have here, you see, uh, I have an MID. So um, the MID is an identifier for Tolkien. So you know Tolkien, his full name is GRR. It's not his full name, it's John Rowe. Rowe and so there are different ways for a person to be named. A nickname, a full name, and so on and so on. 
So it's pretty hard to deal with text. And here you can actually deal only with an, an ID. And this person, even with a pseudonym, for instance, a, a fully different name, will always be recognized with his ID. And the cool thing too is that I get a reference page, a reference page, sorry. So here it's a, the Wikipedia page about Tolkien. The second group, the, the green one, is British. That's related to United Kingdom. And the books in orange are recognized as work of art. Works of art, right. So it's a, always the same principle. And last, uh, you can analyze the sentiment. So always with The Hobbit, I took two reviews from the web a positive one from the New York Times back in the days and a negative one from uh, Pauline um, and I found this in um, a social networks uh, about books um, book reads and so I give the two reviews at the same time to the API and I get this result so I get ratings all the different sentences are rated between minus one to plus one, <coughs> plus one be, being the most positive. And it does work. Um, uh, the three green sentences here are actually from the New York Times, and the three negative ones come from police. So that's pretty cool. What have we seen? We've seen that you can understand how a sentence is built with the syntax. You can understand what it's talking about with the entities, and sometimes with the characters, the places, and everything. And you can also understand the sentiments. So you can, maybe it will give you some ideas. You can do pretty uh, many things with that. Uh, um, an example, uh, it's a use case, business use case. So Okado is a British retailer, so in the, in the UK. Uh, and they have data scientists in their teams. And there are, they have a lot of data. They are analyzing everything uh, as much as they can. And um, they have uh, changed their um, customer service to use machine learning. Uh, they have a team uh, of people, the customer service, uh, with handling all the user intera uh, interactions. Uh, and with the natural language API, they are able to understand, for instance, when someone is really angry about a product. Um, they're very open about it, so if you're interested, you can look. Okado uh, machine learning, uh, they, have, they have written uh, many articles about it. They describe how they improve uh, their service. With the same thing, they are able to um, handle more requests and faster also, uh, because they can prioritize. Uh, an example, uh, if you're, tell me, you're telling me, oh, your, your app is great, I love it, I, I'm very happy to, to know that, but maybe I have the time to read uh, this message. But if you're telling me your app has a major bug, uh, it worked one hour ago and now I'm pissed off because everything is broken, that's a shame, and so on and so on. Uh, with natural language uh, analysis, I can understand that it's very negative and it's just sudden. Uh, everything was okay and suddenly uh, I have a re very negative uh, feedback. And this way you can, um, you can act uh, uh, very quickly and, and have a better um, interaction with your users, right? Uh, the second API, uh, the translation API. I won't go much into detail because you all know it. Uh, it's Google Translate, right? Uh, has anyone never used Google Translate somehow? No. Uh, so it works on your mobile phone. It works, of course, on the web. Quickly, it translates text from or to uh, over 100 languages. So if you think about it, that's thousands of different combinations. It's also, of course, able uh, to understand, to recognize the input text, the language. Uh, still very easy to use. Um, you can also uh, uh, input uh, HTML. So for instance, if you're building uh, an app and you receive emails, um, <coughs> You can translate emails because you provide the, the HTML and, and then you get the, the translation back. And it's also high quality. So this is where I, I will spend some, some time. About two years ago, I would say, uh, I, I, I wasn't part of, uh, of Google. Uh, and I noticed that on Google Translate, something changed. It was a lot better. And since I joined Google, I, I understood what. Um, the model for Google Translate 
was historically based on a sta statistical model. It was working okay, it was good. Um, but for, for instance, for French, I could tell the difference. From one day to the other, the results were amazingly a lot better. Um, and what happened is that Google switched from a statistical model to a machine learning model. And thanks to that, the, result, the quality of the result is just impressive. So I, I don't know if you noticed that for Polish too, about two years ago, there was a big jump in quality for the translations. Yeah, I see, uh, I see that. Uh, so that's also the power of machine learning in general. Uh, you can reach results that you cannot do uh, any, any, any way uh, else. Uh, and also, uh, machine learning is always learning. You can train it constantly. So for instance, Google Translate is just improving uh, with time. And you, you have also sometimes, sometimes you say, okay, this translation is not good. And it does change some coefficient somewhere. Uh, so the, the model is, tr is being trained by itself, but also with human interactions. So that's also the power of machine learning uh, with the help of, uh, of Okay, an example, Airbnb. So 60% of their connected users uh, don't speak the same language. So that, that might be an issue for people to communicate. So they're using the translation API and they, they translate virtually everything, though the listings from their users, uh, the communication, and thanks to that they have highly improved the likeliness, the possibility uh, for people to book uh, rooms or, or houses. Okay. A third API, the speech API. So this time we're not providing text as an input, we are providing audio, speech. And a bit like the translation, uh, it supports over 100 la uh, languages and it converts the speech to text. So thanks to that, you can actually also index uh, audio because you can uh, translate everything or transcribe everything to text. One, so, um, one cool thing also is that it's real time. So you can work in batch, but you can work in real time. So it's almost immediate. So you, you talk, you, you can try it in your browser if you want, if you've never tried it, or maybe you've tested an assistant on a mobile, mobile phone, so you just talk, and what you're saying is being transcribed in text uh, almost immediately. Uh, it's robust to noise, so that's also why it works well. Thanks to machine learning, the noise is just ignored. Uh, without that, without that, it, it wouldn't work the, the, the same way, and that's a building block for the home assistant. Uh, who has an assistant, uh, Google Home, Alexa, or anything else? Yeah. So uh, you you guess at home that you can work, you can have the TV on. Uh, sometimes it, it gets triggered, but when you talk over music, over TV, whatever, uh, the assistant hears you. And it does work. So it's able to, to separate the voice, or, and sometimes your voice if you're training, uh, from uh, ambient, ambient noise. And for the business use cases also, you can improve the recognition by giving some context. So for instance, if I'm working in a hospital and I have many uh, complex words uh, that um, uh, we're not using every day, uh, to improve the recognition, I, I, I can give a medical dictionary, for instance, to the API. And this way it will recognize a lot better the words that I'm using uh, in my uh, business uh, use case. Okay. And small feature, you can get the, the timestamps. So it means you can synchronize everything. You can know exactly where, when the words are being pronounced. So likewise, uh, you can index pretty much all your audio uh, stream. Um, so, uh, an, another example, uh, Azure is a matchmaking app. So, like Airbnb, they are using the translation API. But moreover, so they connect people from anywhere in the world who can see themselves uh, and who don't speak the same language sometimes. And they're using also the speech API. So, what happens is that you can talk to the person in front of you. What you're saying is being transcribed to text and the text is being translated to your recipient uh, language. Okay, so it's something that wasn't possible before unless you had a translator with you. 
Um, another API. So this one is my favorite, the Vision API. So this time, we're not giving text, we're not giving speech, we're giving pictures. And I've been working uh, on image processing. I guess it's still a field that is uh, being taught uh, uh, in your university. Uh, and here, I'm, I have really been impressed. Uh, not because uh, I worked at Google. Um, I was impressed before, and I, th I think it's one of the reasons I, I joined Google. So this one is really my favorite. Uh, it's able to detect uh, a lot of things, uh, labels, faces, uh, text, um, uh, monuments, places, uh, it's able to recognize the type of picture uh, that you're uh, showing and also logos. So um, I think it's interesting to, to see uh, a few uh, more uh, examples. So I took a picture on the web uh, about Paris. So I give this picture to the API and it tells me, okay, it's about Paris, right. But anyone here could tell it's Paris or uh, here is the result I get. So, landmark annotations, the MID about Paris. Uh, I get the rectangle, okay. So Paris is here, yeah, that's right. And I get the GPS uh, location. So that's pretty useful. So it works, okay, but it's a little bit easy. So I got a, another picture where there's an Eiffel Tower. But it's not my Eiffel Tower from Paris. It's actually in Las Vegas. And in this case, it still works. So it's telling me, okay, this picture is about Paris Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. I get also the location. Here, it's uh, the, the location, the Google Map location about uh, this uh, Eiffel Tower. So, but let's say it's pretty easy, right? Because there's a lot of things uh, around uh, this uh, tower. So it doesn't look like Paris. Uh, with the Vision API also, what it's telling me is that there's a full matching image here. And that's actually where I got the picture. So maybe you saw that on Google search, you can search text, but you can also provide pictures. And you can find the picture that you provide on different sites, or you can also get similar images. If you, I don't know, if you're working on pictures and you want to build something with uh, similar images, uh, or if you have copyright issues, you can know where your picture has been used elsewhere. Okay, but so in this case it works, but still uh, quite easy, I guess, uh, for any human. This time I took another picture from the web, but I changed it. So I cropped the picture, I skewed it, I flipped it. Uh, of course, uh, Every time, there's no metadata. You know, when you take a picture with your mobile phone, there's the GPS information, many meta the metadata within the, the picture file. So every time I removed everything to make sure that it's not using the metadata. And this time, if I show this picture to someone in Paris, nine out of 10 people would tell me, yeah, this is the Eiffel Tower in Paris. But the Vision API is not true. It it tells me, no, that, that's the Eiffel Tower in Las Vegas. And this is pretty amazing because here I would need, let's say, 10 seconds to see that something is weird. Here there's uh, something written on the Eiffel Tower, it's flipped. And below there, there are flags, there's something below. But I didn't see that at first. Oh, I, I made it on purpose, but... So I could fool almost anyone in my family saying, okay, this is Paris, but this is actually Las Vegas. And the Vision API is able to tell the difference, right? Also, uh, it's able to detect uh, labels and text. So here I took, uh, I retrieved a picture from the web. Uh, it's in New Zealand, and it's also about the Hobbit. So, um, so it's telling me, this is about nature. There's a tree, woody plants. Uh, it's a photography, and that's right. Uh, so it can be useful if you want to analyze what's inside the picture. And also, uh, as you can see, there's a sign here, and it's telling me that there's English text inside it. Uh, it's actually not elfish, but let's say Tolkienish font. It's a bit weird, a bit hard to read. So it's, it's giving me a pretty good no admittance except on so you, there are stresses uh, above the whole and some vowels. 
So the only mistake it's making is that it's ma missing the space between except and on. But it does recognize the text, so pretty amazing. It's also able to recognize faces uh, within pictures. So the, the position of your eyes, uh, nose, mouth, and everything. And also the sentiments. So as you can see here, so this is a, a rendition of Gollum uh, that uh, Ellen Neal, so it's not me, uh, uh, rendered on his computer. Uh, and it's telling me that uh, Gollum is angry. Yeah, uh, he looks pretty angry. And like always, in the JSON uh, data that you get, uh, you can analyze everything. Where is the position of the left eye? Uh, in three dimensions, how is the face position? Turn, skewed, and everything. Um, what is the, the likelihood uh, that the, the face is joyful, uh, angry, surprised? Uh, is the picture blurred, uh, underexposed? And is the face wearing something on his head? So maybe it can be useful in some uh, use case. And like for the rest, uh, it's able to recognize entities. So this time I took a pretty rare picture of Tolkien, uh, taken by a uh, for a Spanish um, a newspaper, and it has been able to recognize uh, Tolkien uh, once again. Uh, so here telling me, okay, this picture is about G.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, maybe about the Lord of the Rings, but uh, a lot less related. Um, and this time, this is a picture in the forest. Uh, so does it tell me uh, that there? Yeah, uh, it's all about uh, Tolkien. Uh, so I still get the entity for Tolkien, the same. And this time, it gives me the full matching images from the newspaper ar article that uh, I used. Uh, but the image is a lot bigger, so I cropped it. I I modified some little things, but still it works. So that's the power of machine learning. Uh, humans might be fooled by some um, features. Um, machine learning doesn't care because it's using something else. Okay. So if you combine uh, features with time, that you you get videos. Uh, so we also have the video intelligence API. So I, I won't spend time on it, but you can guess that it's able to do pretty much what we've seen so far uh, with the, the time uh, dimension. So you are able also to recognize frames, so sequences in your video. For instance, I have children. If my children are entering my living room, running every everywhere and being very joyful, I will get this sequence and it will tell me, okay, there are children in this sequence and everyone is happy. So also you can index your videos thanks to that. Um, and, and for pictures and videos, you can always also get the type of, uh, of the picture that you have. And especially, uh, we use that to det detect adult content. Or it can be useful for uh, violent content or medical content. So most of the time, it's content that you don't want to show to kids or young people. And finally, there's a new one that uh, we just released, uh, it was time, it's the te text-to-speech API. So this time we take text in input and we transcribe everything in, in audio. So you've seen that, I guess, many uh, companies have this solution, but this time uh, Google's solution is very different. It's not based on phonemes, it's once again based on machine learning. Uh, so I invite you to test it. Um, because this is amazing. This is brand new. It was two weeks ago, announced two weeks ago. Uh, it has been built by, by the DeepMind um, team. So DeepMind is in London. Um, it's in the, in, in within Google. Uh, DeepMind um, are uh, in, in, in artificial intelligence uh, experts. And they've built something called WaveNet. And we wa with WaveNet, they are able to generate voice and you cannot tell the difference with a human voice. Almost not. Uh, so I invite you to test it because uh, I, I have chosen my voice. There's one I like very much. And that's the other building brick for an assistant or a chatbot. If you want to, to communicate with a computer, an assistant, any device, then you can speak to it. The speech API will trans 
transcribe your speech to text. The text will be used for uh, any feature, and likewise, uh, the device can talk back to you with the text to speech, like a human being. Okay, so it's enough uh, talking about the different features. I think it's more interesting to uh, to test it uh, in real time. So I'm going to do a, a small live demo with uh, content from uh, Poland. So I arrived yesterday and I was here also a few months ago. So I I kept uh, three pictures. So this one uh, was a few months ago. So here, uh, this is the, the, the part that you can try on your browser without building anything. If you want to actually test it and, and, and maybe uh, get it to fail or not. So this is a picture I took a few months ago. So it was pretty nice. And it does recognize the, the street, uh, the GPS location in Krakow. Um, what does it tell me else? Uh, you see, yeah, maybe. So it tells me that there's a vehicle, trans it's about transport, car, uh, a town, a street, a city. So yeah, that's pretty uh, precise. Um, and once again, it's about Krakow and I can get the exact GPS location <laughs> of, uh, of this city. Another example. So this is a picture I took yesterday. Um, yesterday afternoon. Uh, here I have different results. So, first of all, the, uh, it's telling me there, there's a face, so right? There, there's a person riding the carriage. Um, so, it's telling me that, yeah, the, nothing more about the, the person. It's telling me uh, that it's winter, so that's not fully accurate. Uh, it's spring. But, for human beings seeing trees without any leaves, I think we could say it's winter, right? Okay, so let's say it's correct. There's a carriage, there's a, there's a horse, uh, there, there are two horses. It's about transport. Uh, here it's incorrect. Uh, it's telling me that there's snow uh, with 86% of confidence. So here we, we can say it's incorrect, uh, it's failing. Uh, so it would be interesting to see in a couple of months or in one year whether it's still telling me that it's snow. I hope the model will improve, but still you get a pretty precise uh, recognition about what's in, in the picture. Uh, is there, yeah, nothing that is interesting here. Um, oh yeah, I forgot one thing about the first one. Uh, it did recognize all the, the text location. So maybe you use that with the uh, translation app. Uh, so here, yeah, it's telling me, okay, here are the locations, sorry. Uh, okay, here are the locations where I could see text. So yeah, you can also index the text that you have on features. And last feature I, I wanted to try, something that I like very much, so I thought that this small statue wouldn't be recognized, but actually it's telling me that it's the sorry, oops. It's telling me it's the well vowel is it pronounced the vowel? Uh, it's telling me it's the vowel dragon. I guess it's uh, like this small vowel stick in Polish. So it does recognize the statue. It's telling me exactly where it is. Um, and I do get, okay. uh, there's a tree, right? There's a tree uh, behind. Uh, we did plant. It's a pretty sculpture. There's a sky, a rock, and animals. Yeah, the rock is, is below. So, yeah. Uh, being able to recognize the statue here uh, is something that we wouldn't need to take some time about, and if you've never seen it, of course, you, you cannot guess what it is. Or, or maybe uh, sometimes you can say it's a dragon. So once again, uh, pretty impressed with that. Uh, let's try to do more, okay? Uh, so what I've done, so the, the, the title of the speech is Boost Your Art with Machine Learning API. So 
my goal is to show you uh, what you can do th with machine learning, maybe to give you some ideas, uh, and also to show you how easy to use it, how easy it is to use it. Um, you just have to do uh, requests. So what I've done is I've did a web app, a very simple one, uh, that we're going to be able to use with your smartphones, uh, and I'm going to uh, control it from my laptop as an administrator. Okay. Um, and a small disclaimer, no servers have been harmed while I was making this demo. So this is my little job just to, um, to talk about serverless. So serverless is made big, has anyone heard, heard the term serverless? Uh, not, yeah, 20%. Uh, so serverless means that you can use cloud services, but you are not actually uh, setting up any server. You are just using services. Everything is running uh, in the cloud. So what I've done is I have developed some code. Sometimes I, I tested it on my laptop, but I just pushed the code into the cloud and no servers had to be configured. And it works. I have a web app on the web. It works on your mo mobile phone. I can use it. And at the same time, I'm using a machine learning API. And everything is just plugging services uh, one to the other. Okay. And so with the beginning of this demo, uh, I would like to welcome you to the Stash Club. So Stash Club, Fight Club, maybe it will ring a bell. Maybe you've not seen the movie. So it's a movie with uh, Brad Pitt. Uh, there are eight roles in the Fight Club. Uh, for the Stash Club, I will just limit that to three roles. So <laughs> first rule, you do not talk about Stash Club, OK? Second rule, you do not talk about Stash Club, but OK, you can tweet about it. And the last rule is, if it's your first time at the stash club, you must get your stash, whoever you are, okay? So le let's get started. <coughs> so here, this is my administration uh, page. I'm going to give you a QR code, so please uh, get your smartphones. So either you can use the QR code here, or you type bit.ly slash SFI demo. And you should be reaching a page like this. Yeah. I'll give you some time to get connected. Bit.ly slash SFI demo or the QR code. Yeah, any issue? Mm -hmm. I still see some people scanning the QR code. Yeah, everyone, everyone is okay? Okay, so I'm going to uh, go to step one. Okay, so if you tap the refresh button, uh, I'm going to ask you for your nickname. So you can enter your nickname, it's just to recognize you uh, Later, uh, if it's needed or not. Okay. Please wait and a moment. Sorry. Could you wait a moment? Of course, of course. You you want to go to get connected? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, I go back. Okay. So. Yeah. Is it okay? So it will ask you, so you don't have to do it if you don't, you might uh, see your face uh, on the screen. So if you don't want to see yourself, you don't have to do it. But it might be fun, so if you want to try. Uh, so yeah, you can see, pretty dark, but here I'm going to take an identity picture, okay? So let's try to not show any emotion. That's what we want to have on ID uh, card or passport. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm using the Vision API. The Vision API is telling me, okay, there's a face in this picture, or there are many faces, uh, maybe. And it's extracting the face, and at the same time, I'm going to add a stash to everyone. 
Okay, so here I look like my father now. Okay, so let's check if it works with you. So here, welcome to the Splash Club. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool, right? So if you're not happy with the result, you can do it a few times. You just go push the back button. Uh, but what we're going to try is now to, to do uh, faces with sentiments. So you can try again and be happy. Okay, I'm going to try it. I just uh, added this uh, two days ago, so but I should work. So now let's try to be happy or sad or angry or surprised. Okay? Hey. So it's the same process, except that if it recognizes some sentiment, the picture will be uh, processed differently. Uh, I will still have my, my stash. Um, now I'm going to try to be angry. <coughs> Maybe without the glasses, it will work better. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to be surprised. Okay, uh, and I'm going to try to be sad. Uh, are you trying to? Okay. So here it was for everyone. So now let's see if uh, we could recognize some happy people. Yeah. Oh, this one, uh, yeah, is uh, uh, <laughs> angry and happy, let's say. Uh, the other ones are happy, I would say, yeah. So it works, right? So now let's see whether there are surprise people. Yeah. Oh, here, I have a, a bad mapping about the stash. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, I, I will have to check that. So surprise people, angry people. Yeah, <laughs> so, so you can tell, uh, sometimes you have different uh, emotions in a single picture. And here, I would say it's rather uh, hang someone who is angry, but yeah, if you, the way you look at it, you might say, okay, uh, the person is also uh, uh, joyful, okay? And the sadness is maybe the, the hardest uh, emotion to transcribe, oh, okay, okay, now we, we did it. A few of us, oh yeah, we are sad. Okay, so you see, uh, it works quite well. <coughs> so now, uh, how does it work? So here's a, a small schema about what I did. So I did a small web application. It's uh, written in Python, so it's a Python backend. I'm using the Vision API, and here is your smartphone. And what I did is, I just in JavaScript, I activated your camera uh, with your uh, permission. Uh, I sent your picture to my site. Uh, I store your picture. And whenever there is a picture here, it triggers a cloud function. And this cloud function is going to call the Vision API. The result I get is the JSON that you've seen. And I store the JSON in a second cloud storage. Bucket. It's called a bucket. A bucket is like a folder in the cloud. Whenever there's a JSON data, so JSON here uh, is, okay, there's a face or not, uh, the person is happy and everything. Uh, it triggers a second function. That's the compositing function I wrote. And here I'm trying to add a mustache to everyone. And whenever it's finished, I store the composite photo. So if I took a picture of all of you here, it would work. It would add a mustache to everyone and store the composite photo here. And when there's a composite photo here, it triggers a last function where it's using the composite photo and the JSON metadata, and it's extracting the face, only the face with the mustache, and storing the result here. And when it's finished, uh, we can show the result on your mobile phones or here on the screen. Okay? Uh, and 
we're going to see the code, a little bit of code, so there's roughly 10% of developers here. Uh, and there's a second step. I'm also using the, canon, the translation API uh, and the natural language API. So I'm going to show you how it works. Sorry. Um, maybe some code. Um, are people interested in seeing the code, the uh, Python code and the uh, Jazz? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, okay, so let's get here. So, this is my Python backend. Um, this is the code that is uh, going to translate the text and to analyze the text. As you can see, there are 35 lines of code. Uh, not here, less than that. There. So, what I'm doing, I'm using the translation package, the language package, and when I want to translate, so this is. I've written this for my app, and when I want to translate text, I'm using a translation client. I'm providing text. I'm saying, okay, here is the destination, the target language that I want. So, for instance, you're going to uh, send me messages. Uh, I will translate everything to English, okay? Whether it's Polish, French, or whatever. Um, here it's just for HTML uh, translation. And here, in the JSON response that I get, I just get the detected source language info and the translated text info. And this is what I return. And elsewhere in my app, I'm able to use this information. Likewise, for the text analysis, I create a language client. I create a document based on the text that I provide. And I'm saying, for performance reasons, uh, okay, uh, the text that I give you is in English or in, in nothing. Uh, and then the API call that is made in Python is annotate text. Give me all the information about this text. Okay, so this is what we're going to use in the next part of the demo. But for what you've seen so far, uh, the cloud function that I've written is in Node.js, so this is JavaScript. It's the same principle. I'm using the Vision API, so I use the Vision API package. Uh, I'm going to retrieve the picture from the cloud or upload a picture from the, the cloud, so I use the storage uh, package. And here is, uh, yeah, you see, still about 30, 40 lines of code. I'm saying, okay, in this picture, I want to detect whether this picture is safe or not. Is it violent or not? Um, I want to detect the faces, okay? And, and here is uh, the request. So it's like in the Python code, very similar. And this is the routine to upload the picture in a, in a bucket. So as you can see, this is uh, very, very easy to use. Um, I'm going to to do one test, so those are the cloud buckets. Um, <coughs> I'm going to invite someone to the party to see what it does. Um, okay, so let me get additional features. If you remember, I have a part where it's able to um, uh, it's able to, to tell me whether uh, it's uh, violent or not. So here I'm going to take pictures of famous people and a violent picture. Here I'm just uh, dragging and dropping um, the pictures. It's just as if I was sending the pictures from my phone to the uh, cloud uh, bucket. And it's going to trigger the same, every, what you saw, it's going to trigger the same cloud function. So, yeah, I'm a bit, <laughs> okay, I'm stuck. Um, so let's see uh, the result. Within all users, okay, let's accelerate that. Yeah, so we have Einstein in the stash club, cool. We have my uh, president, Macron, and we have a zombie who came here. But as you can tell, I detected that it was a violent picture, so I blurred it. I added the, the stash and I blurred the picture. So with that, you can detect uh, some content, okay? So now let's try the last part um, with text. 
So I move, sorry, here. Yeah. So now I open the second step, and you can actually send me, so if you open again the, the web page, you can actually send me any text in Polish, in German, in French. Okay, I'm going to, uh, yeah, oh, we have a few minutes. So I'm going to, to add my own uh, samples. I love raspberries. Um, so those are sentences in English. I can use emojis. Uh, in French, j'adore les framboises, je n'aime pas les pastèques. So we will see what it means if you don't speak French. I don't speak English uh, nor Japanese, but let's try it. If you remember, whenever something is not in English, I will translate it to English. And also here, I see a pretty recent, must launch a Tesla into space. The vehicle will not reach planet Mars, Mars, Mars as expected. So let's check the feedback that we got. So here are the source sentences. Uh, French, English, French, Japanese. Hey, someone, is that Japanese? Yeah? No. Uh, French, Spanish, Polish, Chinese, so that's the one I put. Polish, Japanese, English, Deutsch. Yeah, that is that. Uh, Portuguese, uh, Polish, English. Okay. So as you can see, uh, it's being translated on the fly. And now I can recognize entities. So all of us, we've been talking about planet Mars, so that was me, the French language, the Java language, uh, Mortadella, the Web of Dragon, so it wasn't me, right? So someone who of you uh, talked about uh, the Web the Vav of Dragon, Poland, Elon Musk, oh, someone is maybe from Mist or Be uh, from Belarus, sorry, not me, uh, Krakow, Tesla, and here are the names, so, yeah, I talked uh, talk a lot about raspberries and ra watermelon, but then we talked about world and wood, okay? And uh, finally, uh, the sentiments. So the most positive words were, yeah, also th that was my, my sentence. My favorite the, the monument is the Vavo Dragon, so that's very positive. You have a very, very nice accent, so thanks, Kami. Uh, very positive, too. Uh, very good presentation, thank you, Pior. Uh, so I, love, uh, I talk a lot about raspberries. Good morning. My sweet friend Katia speaks Spanish and English because she lacks other nationals. Polish women are the most beautiful, very positive. I'm craving pizza. Yeah, it's almost lunchtime. Uh, Krakow is a beautiful city that was me. I like it. Time and money win the world. Personally, I think that watermelons are better than raspberries. Yeah, every, everyone states, right? Uh, raspberries make good. Okay, here is the neutral part. My own. Um, hello to you. I speak French. Hey, did she? Uh, so I don't know. Oh, it, it didn't get translated. Rafis, Jess, Akeren. Is it? Does it mean something? Anything? No. Thank you in advance. I, so the Japanese was I ate an, oct an octopus. Uh, okay. Greetings from Belarus. Uh, greetings to Christina, so there are some personal messages, so this, this is still uh, neutral. Uh, yeah, so that's Hubert, uh, not very nice. Uh, <laughs> watermelons, I do not have one, I really don't like. When you shall be blade that was broken, and summer is here. So, so as you can see, within a few seconds, I've been able, with this web app, to understand what you were all talking about. Okay? and with very uh, little pieces, of course. So it's time to wrap up. Um, if you want to learn more about it, to test it, you can uh, check this out in your web browser. Uh, and every time you have sample code, so you can understand a lot uh, in a few minutes uh, how it works. So the APIs for anyone, uh, AutoML also for anyone, but if you have your own data, so it's more for business use cases, and uh, if you want to become, or if you are a data scientist, you can use TensorFlow. Open source project, really great. I think it's uh, one of the top projects uh, under GitHub. Uh, and then you can deploy your models. Um, so I hope that you've learned uh, something today, uh, it, that it gave you many ideas, because 
Uh, maybe you didn't think about that. Uh, it was a lot of fun for me to do the, the demo. Um, I'm, I didn't do this job before, so doing uh, conferences. So if you can provide me some feedback here, uh, I will appreciate. Tell me uh, how to improve this presentation. If you have questions, you can also uh, ask questions, but please provide your email address, otherwise I won't be able to answer you. Uh, you can uh, follow me on Twitter if you're interested, Peter Perez, uh, and I will publish the slides uh, of this presentation as soon as I'm back in Paris, so either this evening or tomorrow morning, okay? So I hope you enjoyed it and learned many things, and thanks a lot.